Um, there's a subject that people are questioning about, and that is uh, what effect that is, had, is the lack of male walleyes in the northern part of the state having upon natural reproduction. Uh, what you need to understand is um, sexual reproduction by virtue of fish is a very uh, tenuous situation to begin with. The female releases her eggs, the male swims alongside and releases the milk. The milk holds the sperm. Now the egg itself is only capable of being fertilized for about a minute and a half, 90 seconds after the female releases it. Then the male, uh, uh, a sperm can only swim about a half an inch. So you need a large, when the female releases their eggs, you need a large amount of sperm in the water for the sperm to be able to find the egg. And what most people don't understand, on each individual egg, there's only one place on the side of an egg where a sperm can enter. It's called the oocyte. And so you need a, a real heavy concentration of sperm, and there is. I mean, in one single drop of milk from a male walleye, there are several million sperm in that in that single drop. So the amount of milk that they release uh, does result in a large number of sperm in the water. Um, the situation that we have up north, though, is that when the Voigt decision was passed down many years ago, uh, there was a limit, a size limit and a bag limit of walleyes that can be harvested in the spring of the year by virtue of tribal harvest. And that typically is done very early in the spring. And what we know from what we've seen, we've physically seen um, in our netting process is the male walleyes come to shore first, right after the ice goes out. Um, spawning is influenced by water temperature and day length. Um, so you can have a situation where if the ice stays on a long time and then it all of a sudden goes out and the day length is already um, getting much longer, this will be a bit a rushed event. The males come to shore quick, uh, then they go back out in the water, in the deeper water for a day or so, and then the males and the females come in together. And because of, and it's turning out to be over exploitation of the male population over a number of generations of fish. Um, the male population is going down, so you don't have a sufficient number of males to uh, fertilize the eggs that the females release. There's, uh, um, I'll use the Manaqua chain for instance. Uh, there's a great number of female fish swimming around in the Manaqua chain. Very, very few in relationship to the number of females, males. And in normal reproduction, reproductive uh, production, Half of the fish, half of the production is male and half of the production is female. So if the eggs are fertilized, you should, it should be a 50-50 uh, basis of survival of those little eggs that hatch and, and swim away. But what's occurred up north is that's not the fact. And this is an issue that someone needs to address. And I was at a meeting several months ago where the topic was brought up and it was not even addressed. It was brought up twice in fact and it was brought up by an ind individual from Cliffwick which is the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission but that was not a topic that was to be discussed at that meeting <clears throat> but um, it should be addressed at some point in time. There needs to be a change. Like right now um, the tribes have a size limit so they choose to spear the smaller fish which are typically males they <coughs> do this very early, right after the ice goes out. And the males, like I said before, typically come to shore first. So this is, a, this is an issue that, that really should be addressed at some point in time by those that have the power to uh, uh, change the way the fish are being harvested. 